Did you know about 4,000 people in Washoe County are homeless or live in temporary housing? That's according to Volunteers of America. For two nights last week, Cola 8 News Now's Paul Harris spent two nights on the streets of Reno. It was part of a social media campaign to raise awareness called hashtag this is homelessness. He joins us from the train tracks downtown with more on his experience. Paul. Sarah, it was by these train tracks and across the way at this fence that I tried to sleep for two nights. Sleep that came in small doses. Now, what I lost in sleep, I gained in knowledge of what it's really like to be homeless in our town. As the train rumbles past Fourth and Evans, I join a group of volunteers who are spending a few nights on the street, hoping to understand what it is like when you have nowhere to go. I am told there is safety in numbers as we are joined by a few homeless men and their dogs. The hardest thing about being out here, I would have to say dodging the police. The wake up call comes at 4.30 as the homeless who sleep by the tracks don't want to get hassled by Reno police who make their sweeps around 5 a.m. If I see him here tomorrow, I've given you a warning, and then it's either going to be a citation if they want to come back and disregard my warning, um, and then the third time it's easy to go to jail. For those who have nowhere to go once police sweep the tracks, they can use the day area next to the shelter, nicknamed the pit, as refuge from the streets. Both men and women must be out from the shelters by 8 a.m. so they can be cleaned up. The shelter can also accommodate 27 families, and for one little girl, Thursday was her first day of kindergarten. One woman who came to the shelter to escape an abusive boyfriend was anxious about a job interview she had later in the afternoon. Oh yeah, you know people judge you when they find out you're homeless or they see you down here. They, people do judge, the public really does. When Melanie Sandomirsky went for the job interview, she was told all the positions had been filled. The shelter and the existing overflows can fit about 400 people. But if they can't get a room here, then it's on the street that they have to stay for the night. Pat Cashel, who took over running the shelter five months ago, says a possible solution is more affordable housing. The funds are limited, the housing's limited. Uh, that's, our, and, you know, that's our ultimate goal is to get people housed and back on their feet. And Cashel son of former Reno Mayor Bob Cashel, should know about getting back on his feet. He struggled with addiction for nine years before getting sober. We can end our homeless problem. I really feel that way. How do we so, do that? By all coming together and, and, you know, like I said, treating these people like human beings. That is one thing Sandra Mirsky would like the public to know. We're all human down here. We have feelings. Everybody has a different story. And everybody here is not bad. Now, Sarah, I can tell you, for being out here for two nights, my back hurt, my, you know, my hips hurt, I didn't get much sleep, so I can only imagine what it's like to be out here day in and day out. Now, there are no easy solutions to this problem, but that doesn't mean people aren't willing to help. Coming up at 6.30, I'll tell you about a new home that is dedicated to helping homeless teens. Live in downtown Reno, Paul Harris, Colo 8 News Now. Okay, brave work. Paul, thank you so much.